All right, I'm on hole number three of the Safari Sunrise Tournament. Wednesday's qualifying round in the Ricky Division. Let's see if we can go. Let's see if we can not go epic fail on this hole. And there is a huge epic fail chance on this hole. I've been having an issue. I've been watching my, where my landing spot is, and here's the issue that I've been having on this hole. There's there's a bunch of different ways that you can go at it. I saw somebody yesterday that was they they opted that they were not going to do the rough bump. Okay, so there's a rough bump back here that you can do, but the way that the wind's blowing here is it's blowing kind of like in line with this. So if you're using this rough bump, you can you can pull the wind out without having to get into the rough or into the sand. And what they did was they did the shot from over here where they were coming at the hole. Well, the deal is, is if you don't bring a big enough side spin ball, and I'm not even sure if you bring a really big side spin ball, if you can if you can get around there, they were like a blade of grass off of this rough. And it's like, dude, if you're going to take that big of a risk that everything on the right is out of play, why don't you just go for the rough bump? Okay, so if you're going to use the shot out here in the fairway, the whole deal, the reason you're using this shot is because you want to be a little safer about it and give yourself at least a shot. Give yourself some separation, at least a couple rings. So I'm doing, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do the rough bump and I'm going to do a 10% wind adjustment with a power one ball. I have no idea which ball I'm going to use. I have no idea what my options are. Power one. What are my options? And I want to, if I can, I want to use a low wind ball because the less we have to move the wind down there, the less we risk putting that sand into play. So what are my options? What are my options? I think this is a power ball. That's a zero. I don't even know if I have any. I do have some Krakens and I have four of them. So I can use this ball in the weekend round. So I'm going to make a note here on my notes. That I can use a Kraken. cut the wind down on the weekend round, but I'm going to play here with a navigator just so I can cut the wind down a little bit with a nav. And I'm going to do a 10% wind adjustment. 1.1 times whatever the wind is divided by one per ring. And so I have a note here. I'm going to use my sniper. Sniper? That's what I'm using. One per ring. Da, 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 da. Here we roll. Hole number three. Let's see if we can get it in the cup. We were pounding the hole. My teammates, I, we, I started off the week, me and a teammate, Dunner, were playing this hole, and we were like, like hole in one, hole in one, hole in one. And then I decided I was going to try some different shots. So I tried the shot from further back, that rough bump, and... I kept landing on this hole and I didn't have quite exactly what I wanted. Let me make sure I'm back a little bit farther in the in this pocket. About right up to the edge of the cup. It's 2.7. It's going to be 2.97 rings, so right at three rings. Trying to hit it perfect. Ah, oh, I hit it great to the right. That might be bad. Whew, close. What I was doing is I was a little too far forward in that pocket. And so I had my my bullseye, my yellow ring was a little I was a little too far forward, and anything to the right would end up in the sand. And so you want to make sure that you're really centered down there a little bit more towards the back the back sand trap because it gives you a little bit more room on the left and the right hand side so there's just barely a great to the left and the right that you could make if you if you get it centered down there but if you're too far forward in that and you hit a great to the left or the right you're either going to hit the fairway or you're going to hit the sand so it's real real touchy it's real real risky is what it is the back sand, the back rough bump, I didn't make any hole-in-ones doing it, but I was like super close. And I think it was just a matter of elevation and it was a matter of trying to get here with the right ball and the right, the right stuff.
I have hit one in my low level account. I did hit a hole in one on this hole so far in the tournament. So I got that going for me. What I haven't hit yet during the tournament is an Alvi. So I still got an Alvi. I got, I, there's an Alvi waiting for me somewhere. I very rarely ever go a tournament without hitting an Albi and a hole in one. It's been probably six or seven months since I, I was on a big streak. I was like 30 tournaments in a row where I'd gotten an Albi and a hole in one. And I didn't get an Albi in one of the tournaments. It was a tournament where we didn't have a lot of Albi opportunities and I didn't get one that week. But we have some this week. I will forfeit. I do not want to practice those par threes. I want to dial them in during the tournament. If you've got a shot that's super replicatable and some holes are like super replicatable and you can do those shots, but a lot of those shots you're trying to set it up and it's not an every time thing and, and you don't want to waste it during a shootout. All right, that was hole number three of the Safari Sunrise Tournament and Wednesday's qualifying round in the Ricky Division. Thanks for watching.